Today, I'd like to bring up a burning topic, which is being actively discussed nowadays, social networks. For some people, social networking is a lifestyle. For others, it's an enemy. It is someone's business as well. What do you think about it? Everything that influences brain influences consciousness. The point is that we've attached tremendous significance to social networking. But at the same time, we've completely forgotten that the human brain possesses much greater capabilities. Now we are working with computers, telephones, smartphones, which are based on the system zero to one. These are digital symbols, but we have forgotten that we possess bioenergetic qualities which are given to us from above. They are dormant, hidden, and aren't developed. It's a severe problem, I should say, because though these technologies are developed for people, social networking places our consciousness on the downward path. I say this openly because these technologies use transmitters, which could be compared with the microwave oven for the brain. You know quite well that it isn't advisable to hold a phone close to the ear for a long time. Actually, why should we hold the phone close to the left ear and not to the right one? Why should we hold it in this very region anyway? Lots of questions arise. Why do these technologies use frequencies which are disastrous for the brain? Isn't it possible to use other frequency characteristics or other forms of frequencies? There is such possibility, isn't there? Here we are faced with monetization being profitable for some people. Something could provide a benefit while other things are unprofitable. So everything is for the people, but in fact is against them. This is a severe problem. The program of influence and pressure has been created. And it's being implemented again and again. People need networks to get information, necessary for their spiritual development. Originally, Internet was an idea, which was suggested by the ascended spiritual teachers. Though this information might seem strange to some people, this fact took place in the Middle Ages. There were a few spiritual leaders who then excarnated. Now some of them reincarnated in physical bodies, while others are staying in astral forms. These spiritual leaders were famous at that time. And we can know them. From time to time they come to this earth. Even at that time, these spiritual teachers knew that in the future, which is our present now, people would be caught in ignorance. Therefore, Internet, the world network, was created to connect people with each other so that they could transfer spiritual knowledge and values. But now, when we go online, we see a lot of garbage which is engrossing. Just look how culture is changing thanks to the Internet, how artlessly people copy each other. And it's getting worse and worse. Have a look at music, for example. What is happening with musical genres? They are disappearing. Melody and beauty are also disappearing. All of these is the result of the incorrect use of social networks. Let me give a simple example. Some person, piddling around, can mug for the camera and emit some animal sounds. Another person applies rhythm to the beats on the video and gets so-called composition. The third person might have found it interesting and added orchestration, so they've got a new musical style. Although I'm exaggerating now, it is true, isn't it? Shouting, screams, loud noises are used as something very interesting and trendy. And what's the result? Where are you people going with all of these? Without a doubt, nowhere. Vibrations we send. 
or vibrations we hear mold us. That's why in Kriya practice, we listen to the highest vibrations. There is an eternal sound which created this world. This sound gives us all the qualities of the great and the universal. Then a person gets transformed. His atoms start vibrating on higher frequencies. It's very important because a person becomes high-minded and spiritual. Social networks are degrading now. Originally, everything was done with care, in a civilized manner. But in course of time, they started practicing everything that formerly was considered to be dishonorable. Now they don't just pronounce single swear words. They speak dirty language. Do you understand what is happening? It's become very trendy and popular. Even main channels of public Russian television allow to use such language. This is the result of the networks. If a famous person pronounces some ear-cringing words from the stage, the so-called media sources let people think that it is permissible, so children start repeating the same. People start forgetting their native language. Russian language is often much more than it's necessary mixed with foreign words. This is a deplorable fact. Fortunately, there are lots of people who resist this process. We should resist it by ignoring such fact. Without arguing and trying to prove the opposite point of view, this will only cause lots of controversies. A person who understands how such thing influences his consciousness won't get stuck in WhatsApp and watch stupid videos. He'll ignore them. At the same time, WhatsApp, Facebook and other social networks make our life easier. They activate the process of information transfer and make it more dynamic. People often use WhatsApp and Facebook for education. And to help other people. Yes, to help other people. That's right. I've just said that Internet with all its services, let them be WhatsApp, Facebook or others, is necessary to do something. Internet as a world network. Yes, I agree. But what do you think about the substitution of face-to-face -face communication by the surrogate interaction through the Internet? In the direct communication, one can understand their partner's emotions on their face. Communicating through the Internet, we have to choose emojis. So we send a smile, a bracket, or another surrogate. Does this substitute have any real emotional coloring? Or is it just help to increase the rate of information transfer? The idea to increase the information transfer rate prevents us from understanding the main thing. We might understand it, but never think about it. The main thing is that we are guided and controlled. If you substitute your real smile with a smiley face emoji, you erase your real emotions. You are no longer a person who has feelings. You throw the responsibility onto the machine. It sends a smiley to your partner, and he understands everything. He forgets how people really smile. It looks ridiculous when people come together to socialize, when they arrange dates and appointments, but sit looking into their phones. What have they gathered for? What's the point? It's sad when a child can't tell his mother or father about his feelings. Instead of speaking out about his problems, he sends text messages, criticizing his parents or rationalizing his behavior. Do you understand what is happening? You are losing humaneness. There was a time when people treated automobiles with hostility. 
There were groups of people who argued against cars because they polluted the air. Now we use cars, and even ecologists use them. People are just looking for new variations of engines. I think we can't be hostile to social networking because now it's very popular among parents, for example. Parents want their children to be secure. They want to bring their children to the natural format of life. Everything has its advantages and disadvantages. We are rushing into extremes now. Every good thing has its negative sides and vice versa. A bad thing can have some positive aspects. I remember times when I helped my mother hand washing my own clothes. Now I don't have to waste my time on this. I don't have to ruin my hands with a detergent or get blood on them using a washboard. I have a washing machine which does laundry for me. This is all right. We save our time this way. Social networks should work. Internet and social networks were created for time-efficient information transfer. And there are lots of positive people who send valuable information to each other. At the same time, there is a lot of garbage content. It is rather captivating and forms people's consciousness in the negative way. Just look how much garbage is being sent to social networks. How much negative information about people. Even if these people aren't very good, what's the point of sending information about them in social networks? Aren't social networks just a digital copy of the real life? Do you remember the time when there were neither internet nor social networks? Then just walking along the street or in the yard near the house, we could hear a lot of waste information from the neighbor macho guys. We could also hear lots of rumors, gossip, and other false information. It's happening, both now and always. But then it wasn't as large-scale and pervasive as now. Do you think there was some filter? No doubt, there was one. But such information wasn't as abundant as it is now. Do you know what the filter was like? Earlier on, a person had his or her own opinion. Now people have their own opinion to a much lesser extent because we live in the ocean of information, and the tremendous force of this information suppresses people. Don't forget that this force is a sort of radiation. It is an information field which directly affects our subconsciousness. Now people are losing their willpower. Through the influence of mass media, people are being made willless. Remember about it. When you had your own beliefs and opinions, you might have argued, but at the same time had your own will. Now this will aspect is being reduced more and more. This is an obvious fact already, and scientists comment on it. There are so-called computer addiction syndromes and a telephone addiction syndrome. In medicine, which deals with spinal problems, there is also a new disease. When a person is always sitting and looking into his telephone, his head, cervical, and thoracic spine are always in this position. As a result, his blood circulation and blood supply change. In neurosophy and neurobiology, they notice the effect of substitution of the dopamine production when I see. Instagram, for example, has such effect. People put their photos online and wait for likes. Lots of likes under the photo result in the dopamine rush. If one doesn't get enough likes, his dopamine level decreases, but the cortisol level increases, so a person experiences negative emotions. In this way, he gets stress. For example, the level of cortisol isn't very high. In this case, it takes cortisol from 7 to 12 hours to disappear in a natural way. A person might not feel this stress, but the cortisol is already working. It is circulating in his blood, changing his consciousness. The brain is in constant stress, so this person grows old quickly. That's why you should use social networks in a proper way, for the benefit of people. How can we find this happy medium? You should set filters. You've already mentioned filters. 
Make up your mind to set a filter. People who bring you negative information should be excluded from your circle of contacts. Just wish them happiness and say that you don't want to discuss such topics anymore. You can also block these contacts. Use social networks only if you have some idea. Then follow this idea without deflecting from it. Ads and pictures will appear anyway, but don't pay attention to them. Look for things that are necessary for you. Try to avoid your telephone. Yes, try to avoid developing clip consciousness. Have you ever noticed how your hand automatically starts looking for the telephone as soon as the idea about the phone appears in your mind? Do you remember the advertisement, morning doesn't start with coffee? Nowadays, morning starts with a phone on all occasions. If you're working and need to contact people, I understand it. But when a telephone becomes an addiction, that is another story. I'm not talking about telephones now. Actually, telephone is a communication medium. I'm talking mostly about smartphones. How do they influence our children, for example? Now parents are divided into two groups according to their attitude to smartphones. Some of them don't prevent their children from using smartphones. Others make their children use so-called flashlights, non-functional telephones, just to be in touch with a child. Exactly, and it's caused one more problem. In small social groups of children, in infant schools or in secondary ones, some children have smartphones, others don't have them. It causes envy. What should parents do in this situation? What do you think about it? This is a social problem. Differentiation and envy have always existed in society. Such situations as you've described are typical. They always happen in society. Someone has a better car, another one has a bigger house. It existed even in those times when there weren't any smartphones. The feeling of envy often exists in one's mind since his or her birth. It depends on the person's level of consciousness. The problem is not the feeling itself. The point is that parents don't work with children, don't talk to them, don't give their children real knowledge that will allow a child to be bigger than that. A child should understand that a smartphone is just an instrument which can't influence him much. Unfortunately, now the situation is the opposite. If parents deprive their child of his telephone, he goes into hysterics. So there is a new punishment now. If you don't do your home task, I'll take your phone. In such a situation, a child's consciousness is being belittled. The telephone becomes much more important because parents themselves say, we'll collect your phone. So, the child's addiction to the phone grows. A telephone is included in value system nowadays. Yes, and its value is rising exponentially. It's nonsense. A telephone or a smartphone yet. At the same time, a smartphone allows a child to develop dynamically, because there's a lot of good training programs. Won't there be a disparity in children's development, as there will be difference between children who adjust themselves to the digital environment through the use of smartphones, and children who grow up in a natural environment? Natural environment means health, though relative, but health anyway. This child will grow up much healthier than the one who is sitting for hours looking in his smartphone. It is known that people nowadays, both children and adults, have a lot of new diseases. The reason is lack of movement, constant intake of information, clip consciousness, i.e. lack of analysis, lack of proper disclosure. All of these influence the human DNA. The problem we are talking about is very deep. In fact, it's a major concern of society nowadays. It's better to choose the lesser of two evils. Let your child be a bit upset about it, let him feel a little jealous, but instead of sitting with a phone, he might go in for sports, and so will be healthy. Finally, he will use a smartphone but won't be attached to it, unlike the one who has grown with a smartphone and can't do anything else in this life.
A developed mind is of no importance. A person can have some knowledge about real life, but at the same time has never experienced the things he knows about. When such a person gets in a real life situation without his smartphone or internet, he finds himself in the state of total helplessness. He is left with nothing. I'd like to tell you an old parable. Once upon a time, there lived a helmsman. A helmsman is a person who helps people to cross a river by boat. This helmsman was an illiterate villager who couldn't read and didn't know the scriptures. He worked all his life, but earned peanuts. Once an educated pundit decided to cross the river by our villager's boat. While they were crossing the river, the pundit asked the helmsman, looking at him pityingly, Have you ever learned to read? No, sir, answered the villager. I can't read because I've been working for all my life. I don't have any time to learn. You've wasted half of your life, said the pundit. After a while, a storm on the river broke out. By the way, Ganges is a very active river. The wind was very strong and the boat was swaying. A villager was a very experienced boatman. He knew that the boat would overturn soon. He felt bad for the pundit and asked him, Can you swim, sir? No, said the pundit, in fear. I can't swim. You've wasted the whole life, sir, was the answer. I think it's necessary to develop oneself as a whole. And this development shouldn't be technocratic, it should be bioenergetic. This is a fundamental substitution which was made at the outset. Do you really think that ancient people couldn't have unusual consciousness and such particular qualities such as supervision and super receptivity? What's the use of developing technologies if people have lots of diseases and die of brain cancer only because they never part with their telephones using them every minute? Nothing can help them in this situation. Where are these technologies? And where is this science which must save people from their dangerous innovations? Where is the knowledge which could help people to avoid the adverse health effects? or to get rid of the harm which has been already caused. Knowledge is in nature. You see, I'm not against technologies. I use a smartphone and a sound synthesizer for my music. But for me, these things are not the reason to live. I'm not going to stand in a queue for two or three days to buy them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Actually, I've never bought a phone. It's always happened that a telephone came to me itself, and I use it only for one purpose, to help people. When I'm not using it, I usually put it away. In my family, everyone follows the rule. It's prohibited to enter the kitchen with a phone in your hands. Eating is a mystery, a sacred act, given from above. It forms our bodies. I've been to your kitchen and can confirm the fact. Your wife takes telephones away from the kitchen. That's right. She is no stranger to neurosophy, like you and me. I mean, that we understand the mechanisms that affect people. We understand what 4G and 5G mean and what lies behind them. What do you recommend to our viewers? To fortify the immune system. Should we do it right now? Yes, right now, through the exercise of willpower. The immune system is directly connected with the will. Your will is your immune system. My phone has been switched off. Put it on an air regime as often as possible. Or switch it off. Yes, you can switch it off. Or put it away. Exactly. Now, scientists say that a telephone lying close to a person causes degeneration of his consciousness, whether he knows about it or not. As soon as you put your phone away, your system starts working in a different way. The work of your brain also changes. Just imagine that a telephone, this minor object, makes your universal cosmic brain dependent upon itself. These are so-called Lucifer technologies. 
All of the futurists and technologists predict that very soon people will switch over to virtual reality. Different virtual devices in the form of helmets and glasses will take the place of smartphones. So the world will become fully virtualized. What does such future hold? This is a question for our further conversations, a sort of announcement. One video can't cover all these topics. One more question, the final one. Is it a step forward or a step back? It's a step to nowhere. Virtual reality is the loss of individuality. Thank you. I think we'll get back to this topic. Thank you for your answers. They've been very interesting.